Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Janet Yong, and in my channel, I share about Feng Shui, Ba Zi, entrepreneurship, as well as personal growth, especially in the areas of motivation, communication, and success. For all those who celebrate the Lunar Chinese New Year, Gong Si Fa Tai, I hope that all of you had a great Chinese New Year and is looking forward to the year of the Young Water Tiger. Now, in today's episode, I'll be sharing with you on the subject of how can we better understand our children, communicate with them, and especially motivate them to be better in their life. And why did I choose this particular topic? Well, because over the last couple of months, I had many clients coming to me to ask me how I can guide them in terms of motivating their children if they are school going or how I can guide their children and speak to them so that they know their direction especially when choosing a course for their future career itself that's why for the first topic after the Lunar Chinese New Year I decided to focus on this now I must say that because I actually learned the Bazi system adapted it into the Asian personality profiling series, I have had much better understanding of myself, my child, and right now my son is already 21 years old or coming to 22 this year. And the journey has not been easy, but because of the insight that Pazi provided me, I was able to better understand him, communicate, and in the end, help and guide him. So before I actually start on Pazi insights into understanding your child, I would like to emphasize that there are basically two phases when we are looking at motivating our children when they are growing up. Now, the first phase is when they are young, meaning from a few years old all the way till they are about 12 years old or the beginning of teens. This may depend on individual children. And this period itself, you may look at it from the perspective that we are basically hand-holding and guiding them. And if you were to look at it, if you are working and a leader of an organization, it's very similar whether you are looking at it from the perspective of guiding your new teammate who just joined the company or guiding your child when your child is actually learning in school. Now then, if we were to look at once they hit their teenage years, starting from about 12 to 13, all the way to probably around 19, 20 years old, depending on each individual child experience, then the role of a parent at that point in time is more of that of a facilitator, getting to know them and not so much of our hand-holding and therefore the expectations. So a lot of parents usually struggle because once the child are crossing over, especially in the Singapore education system, from a primary school that it's actually after their PSLE at the age of 12, moving on to their secondary school, once they hit 13 years old, they will usually want their own independence. And a lot of parents that I consult for usually struggle with this, where they were used to actually hand-holding and giving certain directions to their child. But once their child has grown up and they want their own independence, and become more rebellious. They do not know how to communicate, understand, and motivate their children. Are you one of them? If you're one of them, great news for you. I'm going to share with you some tips on how you can basically help understand your child, communicate better, and motivate them into two different phases that I mentioned earlier on. Tip number one, if you are looking at how to motivate your child, the first most important thing is the day that they are born on and that would be what we classify the day master and you can click on this link that i'm sharing with you right now either to go to my asian personality profiling series or the Pazi series itself after you've gotten the Pazi chart of your child and you can go to the link that i'm showing here right now where you can get your free Pazi chart for your child now, the day element itself, there are basically five elements of earth, metal, water, wood, fire. 
And in each of these elements, there will be the yin and the yang elements. I will not go into details because you can basically watch what each of these elements mean in my Ba Zi or Asian Personality Profiling series. But what I would like to highlight is basically that for each of these elements, there are the yin and the yang elements. The yin element child would usually be a little bit more flexible and they usually may not come towards you too directly whether they are against you or for what you are saying if it is the young element child usually a young element is associated with the characteristics of being more direct as well as being more straightforward in what they say so if you are yin element parent and your child is that of a young element day master then you have to be aware that your child, no matter how you groom them, they will usually be a little bit more direct. So let me give you an example of that of the young metal element. Now, if you think of the young metal element, the image is that of the axe that chops a tree, right? So if you look at the axe chopping a tree, and if let's say you are a yin element person, don't you think that the axe coming down chopping something would generally be a little bit more aggressive? So understanding that your child is a little bit more direct will basically help you understand these particular impact, especially when you're talking about communicating with them why they are a certain way. If you are talking about young element person, especially if you are looking at the young wood or young metal, most times for them to learn something, they have to go through some kind of experience or hardship. So if you look at, for example, the young wood, which is the picture of a tree, most times they will have to be basically chopped and refurbished in order for them to become useful furniture and the young eggs have to work very hard in order for them to see the results that they want to see. So for children like that, at times, even with parents, because we want to protect our child, we would want to soften the impact of their learning by telling them and sharing with them our experience. But most times they would not listen to us because they learn through falling down, they learn through experience and that's my experience as well as a lot of my clients experience although I know it's very painful as a parent to watch your child fail but it is a crucial step in their learning in order for them to be successful that's something that you need to remember now the next thing then would be to look at the orientation or structure now as shown in this picture here there are basically five types of orientation we have people who are born with the orientation of action, which under traditional parts of system, it's called the wealth structure. Then we have the process orientations who usually need step-by-step -step procedures in doing certain things. Then we have that of the idea-oriented child, the analysis-oriented child, as well as the people-oriented child. And each of these particular orientations I've also shared in my Asian Personality Profiling series. You can click on it and find out more. How do you then find out which orientation your child is? I do have a report that you can purchase, although it does talk about career. But in there, it also shows your child's orientation and especially those whom you are preparing for what they want to do in the longer term. It's good to understand them better. You can click on the link below to find out more about this particular report now let's get back to the orientations itself so when you're looking at learning style a child basically who is that of action and process oriented profile all the people oriented profile will usually learn better in a group setting because the action oriented profile are more about achieving a certain set of goals and whether do they win in a particular competition or do they do better in class. Whereas that of the process-oriented profile will usually need step-by-step -step guides. So if it's a group setting where the school or the enrichment centre gives step-by-step -step guidelines as to what to do, usually they will do much better. And of course, for the people-oriented children, they need basically to feel that they are part of a team and feel motivated itself. So these three types of orientation will usually do better in a group setting from a learning perspective. 
However, if you look at those with the analysis and idea-oriented children, usually what will happen is the analysis-oriented children has to be what we call motivated. They are pretty smart, but they may not necessarily be willing to put in so much hard work. So if it's in a group setting, they usually will slip into the background and you cannot see. So for an analysis-oriented child, first the parent must understand them communicate with them and understand why they behave a certain way and also basically pick their interests in at least one subject before they'll move forward and for the idea oriented child because they have so many ideas of what they want to do in class most of the time these will be what we call the daydreamers because they'll be thinking of so many things and cannot focus so for these two types of orientation of children it is then crucial for you to have a learning environment that is more focused meaning a one-to-one -one or at least talking to them so that they are motivated and especially for the idea oriented a structured environment helping them to focus will be critical and this is especially in the case in an Asian society like Singapore where learning it's usually a lot of times in the olden days by rote so the analysis oriented and idea oriented children that we have usually will struggle in school now this is more about understanding your child and the kind of learning environment that they will do best in the next thing that it is actually critical that you need to look at is what age is your child at or what is the maturity level of your child if your child is someone who's mature because of family background or circumstances they may generally question a lot of the things that you decide for them then at that point in time and especially for the young element people or the analysis or even the process oriented profile of warrior they usually need basically for you to, to communicate with them like you are their friend and a facilitator. Now, this is something that I learned the hard way myself. I remember when my son was growing up, when he was younger, he would have no issues when I actually created the timetable together with him for his studies as well as his revision work for school. However, as he grew older, especially when he went to secondary school around the age of 13 to 14, he started to question every single thing that I communicated with him. And it's lucky that I understand a little bit more about Ba Zi, as well as, of course, I have clients and friends who have gone through the same experience. And they mention he has to learn from mistake. Although it was painful, for my husband and I, we realized that since especially my son is the young element and he's an action-oriented person, he needs to take the action, make the mistake and shape himself so that he can be better. So nowadays, I normally go from the facilitator point of view, meaning giving him a more adult learning kind of environment where if he hits with a problem, our way of basically helping them and guiding them is not to share with them what we would do, but asking them questions, open-ended questions, leading questions, so that they can make the decision themselves. And that's what I find is the best way in terms of helping our child learn, communicating and motivating with them. Because when you go from this particular anger, no matter the kind of orientation your teenager or your teenager turning young adult is going through because they are looking for someone to bounce off their ideas or listening ear and not looking for someone who is a know-it-all to tell them exactly what they should be doing because the experiences and the environment that they grow up in is totally different from how we grow up in in our younger days. I have also created a video previously on how can you better communicate with your children, your loved ones and I'm pointing to this link here. You can click on this link and learn more about it. I hope you have enjoyed what I've shared with you today. For this year, I will be looking at releasing videos once in every two weeks so that I can look for better topics, quality topics that you'll be interested in. I'll be posting up a poll to gather your opinions as well. See you in the next video. Goodbye.